G'day, welcome to another video from Nine Lives Retro and Modern Gaming. My name is Craig, and on today's video, we're going to be ripping the guts out of this DMG, slapping them into this beautiful smoke black DMG shell. We're also going to be backlighting and bivert chipping this thing. And just to be one of the cool kids, I might slap some LEDs in there too, because LEDs look sick. So, first things first though, I've got to say a huge thank you to Retro Gaming Hero right here in Australia. They're a pretty new company. They've kindly sent me this backlight and bivert chip for review, just to see how they stack up against the other ones I've used. So I really appreciate that. Um, they've also been kind enough to leave me with a promo code for use in their store for you guys. So if you do like anything you see here, just use the code Nine Lives Retro Gaming at checkout, and you'll get ten percent off your order. Uh, I'll also put a link in the description below. Lastly, forty dollars and over. Free shipping. Amazing, because Australian shipping is like a billion dollars to post a letter, so that's pretty awesome, I think. Anyway, I'll skim through a lot of this. Everyone's seen these things ripped open a million times before. Um, it does work. I've been really lazy today. Doesn't need fixing, no lines. Perfect. So I'll skim through that, rip it open, and then we'll get to the good stuff. So let's go. Alrighty, we've got it ripped open. First impressions are that this thing looks immaculate inside. It's obviously been stored pretty well over the years, so that is awesome. So I'll just keep stripping it, and then I'll give it a quick clean, or a pretty good clean, just to make sure everything is working flawlessly, and then we'll get on with the mods. So we've got everything stripped down now. This thing is super clean. I'd almost say that it's, it hasn't even had that much use. The pads look pretty much unworn. So this thing might have uh, just, just sat around for a long, long time. So what we're going to do now is jump straight into doing the bivert. First things first, I'm going to take off these two small screws here just to give that ribbon cable a little bit more flex. And then we'll pop the screen back and then get to the fun part, which is ripping off the backing from the screen. So let's do it. Okay, so what I like to do is we have to get rid of this protective layer completely. So I get a nice new razor blade. We have to slide it just under the very edge of the screen. And you want to make sure you get it all the way under there. So you get both, whoops, both layers, not like that. This is super hard through a camera. There we go, so you just start to get it off. You'll usually have a little bit of residue at the start, but once you actually start peeling, it usually comes up pretty good without leaving much mess. So just keep peeling and just try not to stress out the ribbon connections too much. Just go slowly and it should come off pretty quick. This one's flying along now. There we go, so that's off. And if you have a look, if you can see it, there's almost no residue except on this very top corner. So we'll plop it down on the table and uh, just use a little bit of IPA on a cotton bud and that'll clean it right up. Okay, so just before we do this, we want to also get the polarizer ready. Now, normally, if we have a look at this screen, you'll see that one way it's see-through and one way you turn it and it goes black. Normally, you'd have it the black way, like that. But because we're using a bivert, which inverts the colors, we actually just need it to be there so it's clear. So just make sure you've got it in the correct orientation or the colors will look inverted when we do the bivert chip. So this one is obviously a little big, so we've got it in the correct orientation. Just gonna line it up with the backlights module. Take a pair of scissors and we'll just trim that to size. All right, so the back of the screen is nice and clean. We're gonna make sure that we use the correct orientation. So peel off the side that has the protective coating on it. And we're gonna just lift that up 
and slide that between the glass of the screen and just sit it into the plastic housing. Next we're going to take our polarizer lens and we're going to peel the protective coating off that as well. Everything is in place. Time to get the soldering iron warmed up. <clears throat> You'll also notice that it's gone from a sort of crappy green color that it usually has to this awesome looking blue color. So it really does change the appearance of the whole unit. With the uh, backlight and inverted polarizer on it. So I'll just heat up the soldering iron, which will take about two seconds. I'm gonna sit it on about 350 degrees. There we go. Um, so what we do is we take the two points from this capacitor here. So on your left is positive, on the right is negative. You can also turn it over and you'll just see there that it's marked with a positive so you can't really stuff it up. So we'll just make sure that we go red to the left and black to the right. Now what you also have to do is this kit is supplied with a resistor just to limit the amount of power going to the screen. So we actually need to solder the resistor to this point on the left first and then solder the other end to the red lead. Moving in, so I'm going to start by soldering the black wire to this one over here. I'm just going to add a little more fresh solder to this pin so that it takes a lot better. I've also trimmed the black lead down to the right size so we don't have any stupidly long leads. Whoops. Get my tweezers because my fingers are too fat. Done. <clears throat> now we can take our small resistor and we can chop that right down as well. So we can just go maybe. We'll tin that one up too, just to make it all a little easier. Job done. Pre tin the positive and add this on. Just like that. Now we will cut this wire down to size. Strip it. Just in the end of this, oops, excuse me. More. And we'll cut the other end of the resistor down to size too. A little bit more pre-tinning. And then we'll just join the two ends together. You can add some heat shrink over this if you want, but I'm just not going to today. And that is it. So it's really neat. If you can see that, it really doesn't intrude at all. And that's as simple as it gets. So you barely don't, you can't even see anything that I've done. Essentially, it's all covered by the ribbon cable. So we're going to go ahead and put these two screws back in. And that should be that. We might give it a quick test just to make sure it's looking good. Okay, so I've just loosely sat everything back in for now. So moment of truth, we'll turn on the power and get to it. Boom, that looks like it's working beautifully. But you will notice that for now, the colors are inverted to what they usually are. So that's the next step, adding that bivert chip that'll sort everything out and give us some beautiful dark contrast.
Okay, time for the Vivert chip and when they are on an integrated circuit board like this, it makes it so easy because all you have to do is just line it up to the right place. Uh, if you see there's two sort of small pads there, they line up to pins 6 and 7 on this connector. And also if you get that in the right place, you will can see just there that it also, try and get it there, lines up to some other pads. So we literally lift pins 6 and 7 for this to slide under and then we just pump the rest full of solder and that is all you need to do. Now the best thing to do also is just trim all the ends of the legs in the surrounding area because they do stick up the back and you don't want any shorts and you also want it to sit flat. So I'm just going to trim a few of those and that will allow the chip to sit nice and flat in the correct place. So I'll get the soldering iron out again. There's a better view maybe that's to show it lining up with the pads. So if I just move that and slide it down, you'll see it lines up perfectly. So we'll lift pin six and seven, and then we'll pump this bugger full of solder. Okay, so if you can see here, I've got pins six and seven lifted, just there. You don't want to get too much heat into them because it'll lift the pads, but on the other hand, <clears throat> you're sort of bypassing the pads, so it's not a critical thing. So now that we've got those lifted, we're just going to slide this underneath so that those two pins, let me get a bit closer here, so that those two pins line up with the two pins on the board. Just Don't force them in too far, but get, in, get them in a little way just until those other pads line up, which is fine just there. And then we're going to do the fun part, which is just flooding this thing with solder. So we'll add a little bit to these pins here. And then we're going to flood these holes right here with solder. So just pump it in there. You can't really go wrong. I like to just stick it in, make sure it's flowing right down. And that's it. Then we just pump the ground full of solder and bridge it across. Just like that. And that is job done. You can just take a pair of pliers if you like and just check to make sure those pins are nice and secure, but I can see that they certainly were. That is all there is to biverting it. <clears throat> so if we have a closer look, you'll see that we've bridged the ground across, we've soldered both those pins to the two small pads, and then we've just flooded these three holes full of solder, and that's going to invert our screen. So once again, we'll chuck it back in, make sure everything is looking as it should. So we're quickly checking it and as you can see now the colours are back to normal. We've got the dark logo area on a nice light background. So that is looking awesome. We're so close. I've taken the back case and I've installed the rear panel into it, the rear board and some batteries obviously. Put that to the side. What I'm going to use today is I've decided to use a mixture, if I can get this out. Oop of two-piece buttons. I'm going to use clear on the outside and then blue internals. So clear, blue, popper in, away we go. I'm going to do that for both the A and Bs and the D-pad that I've just done. So we have that sort of see-through effect. I just think it'll look cooler. And why not? I've got them. Alrighty, finally I've just switched out the little red power indicator LED for a blue one because I've got blue buttons, blue text, blue looking backlight, even though it's white. So just to complete the uh, effect, I suppose. With that, <clears throat> I think I will slap it all back together and we'll see what we've come up with. Let's do it.
are at the end of another video and I am super happy with how this one's come out. I absolutely love the sort of blue and grey theme. I'll give it a little twirl so you can check her out. Gorgeous. Let's turn the screen on. I really enjoy the blue LED, the power LED with the rest of the theme and the screen looks awesome. I am super happy with it and I'm really happy with the Bivert and Hex modules sent to me by Retro Gaming Hero. Um, it's really awesome just to have this sort of stuff available locally in Australia as sometimes it can be a bit hard We have to go overseas for a lot of stuff. So I really appreciate them doing this uh, Like I said before if you use my promo code nine lives retro gaming You will save 10% off at checkout and if you spend over 40 bucks you get free shipping So that's not too bad. I reckon definitely no hesitation recommending these bivert and screens so thanks so much for watching. Do the usual. Smash that like button. Let's see if we can make it to 10. Like, I'll start small. And, uh, yeah, we'd love some more subscribers because I like having friends. And you guys are my friends. So, yeah, I love it. Anywho, thanks again for watching. And uh, I've got something a little bit special in the next video. So look out for that one. See ya.